Guys, listen up. Okay, a couple quick things. We're getting ready here with our helmets. Key to the game. Okay, it's energy, it's toughness, and it's ground ball. Okay, very simple. Fight like hell for every opportunity, for every possession, and make the most of every possession you have. All we have is each other. Okay, it's time to go out there and compete for one another. Bring it in, boys! It's all about us. Every play is about us. Ground balls on three, one, two, three! Ground balls! Their names define the sport of lacrosse at the highest level. Four programs annually listed among the elite, linked not only by their past success, but by the expectations placed upon them. So don't, for a second, doubt yourself. Just keep playing. We have a long way to go, but it's paying attention to the details. How great do you want to be? Game time! It's in the back, you better believe it. We all play for one reason. Show out dominating this season. It's time. Take that dub with us, so we leaving. You not with us in the streets and brave heart turn it up for the season. Game time. It's the season, 2018. It's been nearly six months since preparations first began for the season. And as fall ball has given way to spring, Every running session, every weight that is lifted carries growing anticipation of what lies ahead. For the Duke Blue Devils, Ohio State Buckeyes, North Carolina Tar Heels, and Syracuse Orange, there is a shared goal of a national championship. But first, each must forge their own identity. We have our ultimate goal, which is the national championship, but uh, winning each day and dominating practice each, each week is uh, something that's really important for us. For us, it's, it's been a process, um, trying to get better, a little bit better each week. And, you know, I certainly credit the seniors and the poise of this team, albeit a young group, to be able to overcome that adversity. One-handed shot and a score! Often in sports, you, you can chase that competitive goal of what would be a national title, a conference championship. Right now, we're really working as this particular team to define what is relentless effort. And ultimately, it's the chase. I mean, we are chasing the best version of ourselves. We lost in the second round last year, and we have a number of players coming back. So they always set uh, very high expectations. I never really have talked to the team too much. They already know it. It's one day at a time and one step forward and trying to figure out what we need to do to get better. Nice job, bring it in! Taking the first step towards a national championship was exactly what was on the mind of Coach Joe Bresci and the North Carolina Tar Heels as they looked to stay undefeated hosting Lehigh. Just seven days earlier, the Heels escaped Furman with a 15-14 overtime victory, thanks to a Justin Anderson goal. And Carolina avoids the upset here this afternoon. You know, I think we've grown up a lot in the, in the first couple of weeks, and, and for this younger group to really uh, develop and mature, to be able to stay composed during the course of a of a tight game and make the plays necessary down the stretch were just huge for this team's growth and development. Let's go! Come on, play our game, play tough, physical, and ground balls. And as the game began, they wasted little time asserting themselves. Yay, just with one hand. Tell me how you stop this. Threading the needle far side. That was some heat there. I harbor. Keep, keep the pressure on. Keep playing smart. You guys are doing great, man. Keep it up. And Cloutier makes it 10-9. UNC kept a slim lead deep into the second half, but with three minutes left, Lehigh went ahead for the first time in the game. And Pettit's got four goals, and Lehigh has taken the lead, 11-10. There's no rush, all right? We have two, three minutes to score the tying goal. There's no rush. Tough conditions right now, cold and rainy. Timmy Kelly, the Tar Heels, just like that with the answer. Great job, Mike. Right, way to go, Mike. Great job. As overtime got underway, North Carolina leaned on both their experience and the strategy that earned them the win just a few days earlier. Mind winning a great pass, open, and in. Perry's got four, sticks in the air. The Tar Heels win again in OT. We just went through this a week ago against Furman. We brought it in the huddle. I said, look, we're going to win the draw, call timeout, and score the game winner. 
and lo and behold, it came true. Just proud of how hard they're fighting for each other. <laughs> One, two, three! With the win, the Tar Heels remained unbeaten at 3-0. Down the road in Durham, the top-ranked Blue Devils were preparing for their biggest early season test against number three Denver. We feel like we, as, as a group, haven't really uh, haven't accomplished what we want to. Some individual accolades here and there, it's, it's not why we came here. We came to Duke to win. This senior class and this team has never beaten Denver, um, so that was one of our, our goals of the season is to take down Denver and give the team confidence that you can play with anyone in the country. The two powerhouse programs went toe-to-toe -to -toe in the first half. Smith to the middle, shoots, and scores! Here comes Morano, streaking toward the cage, and he beats Fowler, and Denver with a 4-1 lead. Guttering with his first tally of the evening. But in the second half, it was Denver who took the upper hand. Ethan Walker, the goal is good, and that is five for Ethan Walker. Oh, Colton Jackson with a hammer. Walker with a great feed. That's a dagger for Denver. Duke's defense, no head on a swivel, not communicating. Down 12 to eight after three quarters, Duke players had a critical question to ask themselves. There are two ways a team could go in that. You can kind of cower back and, and curl up, or you can turn and fight back. You guys are afraid to make plays. Step up and play the game. All right, that's what you're not doing. Coach really challenged our, our character um, and how we are as a group. We really wanted to respond to that. You either bear down and you, and you make plays or not. You gotta take a deep breath and figure it out. And say, I am not gonna allow that to happen going forward. And give it all you got for 15 minutes. Two, five, three, one, two, three. No. The answer came in the form of a new face, freshman Joe Robertson. Gutterding feeds the middle, and a shot to score from Robertson, the freshman. You know, once the first ball went in, everybody kind of settled in, and we started all clicking, chemistry started going, and we just got on a roll. Robertson, the freshman, he's feeling it. Gutterding beats Reddy. Conley capitalizes with the goal and the momentum to the Blue Devils. Robertson gives Duke the lead. Coming of age against number three, Denver. When the dust settled, seven consecutive goals, including four by Robertson, gave the Blue Devils a 15-12 victory and validated their top spot. It was enough to put them in a dancing mood. Making that comeback in the fourth quarter was big and it showed a lot of character out of guys on our team. That's something that was really important to us, showing people that we can, we can fight back, and even if we're, we're down, we're, uh, we're definitely not out of it. That's really fun when you see the whole team working together to scrap out a victory. Every opponent is coming in here, and they're going to bring their best game uh, to the Dome, no matter what. You putting that jersey on is like saying that you did it. Like, you put in all that hard work, you put in all the morning lifts, you put in all the runs. I'd probably say it's one of the coolest things that I'll ever be a part of in my life. The Orange began the season with a convincing 21-4 drubbing of Binghamton. In their first test of 2018, Syracuse gets a big, fat A. But faced their first crucial early season test against in-state rival Albany and their highly touted freshman, Tohoka Nanticoke. I can't wait to watch this guy play. Tohoka Nanticoke, the number one recruit in the country. He's a highlight reel. Early on, the competitive juices were flowing on both sides. Tromboli, and it's in the back of the net. But as the game wore on, Albany pulled away, with Nanticoke formally introducing himself to college lacrosse by notching five goals. Powering his way in front, Tohoka Nanticoke scores! What a powerful finish! Nanticoke's bounce shot is in! Seven unanswered for Albany. You know, the start of the season, we had a good win against Binghamton to kind of figure out what we can do. You come back against a very good Albany team who made us, you know, take a look at what we can't do. And Albany has made an emphatic statement. It's a lesson the Orange hate to learn through defeat, but know it will strengthen their resolve. A week two is a bit of a wake-up call. We saw a very good Albany team and a you know, great face-off guy and a great attack unit.
Army coming into the Dome the following week was a real gut check for us. We had a hard week of practice, and we bounced back. The Orange were determined to get back on the right track against Army. Solomon rolling to the middle, cranks, fire! Woo! And the Orange take the one nothing lead. Rolls back to the left, feeds the crease, white catch by Bob Berry on the crease and shoveled it in between his legs. We are tied at nine. And in overtime, shoots in a save, Madonna. it wasn't enough for goalie Don Madonna to just come up with the biggest stop of the game. Sims, step down shot for the win. Oh! Madonna ate it up again. I think that we did a good job recognizing that we were falling into the same situation that we did against Albany, and we, we refused to let that happen. Madonna surveying line, drive ahead, what a pass. What a catch in traffic, the shot. Oh! And Simmons wins. Oh! Dom Madonna, the goalie, just assisted on a triple overtime game winning goal. I ended up over the midfield line and kind of I connected eyes with Dom. And uh, you know, he threw a perfect ball. I started to streak up field. He threw a perfect ball, hit me in stride. And uh, before I knew it, I was right in front of the cage. And you know, just the easy part was to bury it. Ryan Simmons, the winner, 11 10, the final. Timmy reached out to me two weeks prior to the game, and he asked if he could wear the number 18. Dave Huntley passed away this past uh, winter. He was a Hall of Fame player for Johns Hopkins, and uh, he wore number 18. Coach Huntley was one of the best mentors I've ever had, and uh, as a coach, he taught me so much uh, on and off the field. What an incredible gesture on his part to honor a former great player, but for him, it wasn't about how he performed. It was just about the, the idea of honoring uh, Coach Hunts and his family. He made me a much better player and a much better person today. And, uh, you know, I, I can't thank Coach Huntley and his family enough for what they did for me. For the battle-tested Tar Heels, a trip to Johns Hopkins was just what the doctor ordered, gaining more confidence as the game progressed. This is a very dangerous top six for Carolina. And Tanner Cook on cue. Cook elevates. Wow. Hat trick. Three goals in three minutes from the hot stick of Timmy Kelly provided the difference. Their fifth straight over the Blue Jays. Kelly! Rope! Three straight from Carolina. Timmy Kelly is taking this ball game over. I don't know necessarily if there's going to be a way to top it other than winning a national championship. I mean, every win's special, and that one was extra special getting to wear Coach Huntley's number on Homewood Field. It was definitely a special moment for me and one that I'll remember forever. It's been said that sports don't build character, it reveals it. And for each of these squads, what is being revealed now will pay dividends later on. It's a lifetime of work for a lot of us, but you remember why you started playing the game? You started playing because it was fun. That's If you can find that fun in everything and every day, then working hard just becomes easier. You know, I think as, as a coach, I've tried to remember, uh, these guys need a slap on the back once in a while. You know, Because as a coach, you're always trying to figure out, okay, what did we do wrong in the last practice or the last game? And, then, and you get so wrapped up in it, sometimes you get to tell your players, hey, nice job. 48 hours, four teams, four games, each decided by last minute goals. Buckeyes in desperation mode. Makani all the way down the field. Oh. The shot and a goal! It would take some late heroics by Trey LeClaire to save the day for the Buckeyes. Trey LeClaire. And a goal, the Buckeyes! Get the victory in overtime. Three weeks into the season, each team has been thoroughly tested. And it's not even March.